Welcome back to the Security Summit team. Today we are joined by Sandy Kadaya from Multi Choice. She's the head of IT, uh, risk and compliance. Welcome, Adi. Thank you. Uh, just to kick start off our discussion, can you tell us your role as uh, Multi Choice as head of uh, IT and risk? So at MultiChoice, I'm actually the senior manager for IT governance, risk, and compliance. So yeah. uh, I basically put together a lot of the policies for the IT department, and I help um, identify risks. Uh, I like to call myself the person that uh, has to figure out what can go wrong and fix it before it does. Um, but outside of MultiChoice, I actually sit on a couple of boards and I provide the strategic oversight over the entities, and I bring with me my technical expertise, which is kind of lacking on in most of us. Thank you. Um, we're having this discussion at a point where cyber security is a big issue, and when you sit on these boards, what kind of uh, advice do you give them? And do you think we have enough advisors on, on uh, sitting on boards? to try and talk about the IT situation. So I think I'm there to push the cybersecurity agenda. Mm -hmm. I don't think we have enough advisors sitting on those boards, but I think that's why it's important for people like me to be on those boards, for us yeah. to get more people with this technical expertise. Because very often, um, the board reports have come through when it's very technical, and board members are scared and sometimes afraid to tackle because it's, technology seems like this very big, uncomfortable thing that they cannot understand. Yeah. Um, but that being said, there's a lot of things in business that are you know, these big and uncomfortable things. It's just one of those things in business that we need to be able to tackle. Yeah. So for me, one of the first things that I look at is what is the business? Uh, are we operating in the digital age? Um, do we have data? Do we have um, services that we provide to customers? Um, if so, why is cybersecurity not on our strategic risk register? And that's probably one of the first things that I uh, try to push for. And in the end, what do you think boards needs to change to try and appreciate uh, cybersecurity as a key component of the business? I think boards already recognize that cybersecurity is important. Um, if you think about it, we've got regulations like Poppy that came into effect that made, made boards think about cybersecurity not as an operational risk anymore, but as a regulatory risk. So they do understand the risk, but I think they may not necessarily have all of the information at hand within which to be able to make decisions for the organization. I'm glad you have mentioned uh, Poppy. What do you think the boards are doing to try and change that and accept that there's a new rule, a new law that is in the place to try and protect their interests as well as their businesses? So I think so. the one thing that Poppy brought in is uh, making sure that we have the right individuals in the organization. So we're, we're seeing this chief data officer role come out. Um, we're seeing uh, a focus not just on personal information, but now data in general, because now there's, there's also worries in terms of ransomware. So we are seeing more focus on the professionals that are involved in not just the CIO, but now the CISO. Yeah. And they are being invited either to the board or to present a pack mm. for the board. And then you sit on a number of boards, like you said. Do you think these boards are aware of the cyber security threats that are available at the moment? I think I think they are. I think, um, but the the their focus as a board is very different to what the CISOs or the technical people within the organization focus on the executives. The executives are generally more focused on your day-to-day -day operations. Um, whereas the board is, you know, things like email fraud, that kind of things, or vulnerabilities. But the board is not interested in how many of your vulnerabilities. They're yeah. interested in things like ransomware. Um, tell me about, like, how secure is my cloud? Um, so I think that 
I think they are they are aware. It's just that both parties don't necessarily speak the same language, so it might seem like there's a disconnect. Mm. And, and, and from your experience as a board member of uh, different companies, do you think that there is that appreciation of technology and especially the threats that's posed by cyber threats and the uh, cyber security at the moment? So n- not entirely. I think there's still a disconnect between business operations. So what we need to implement within the business to take the business forward versus what are the technologies that come with it? Uh, and then what are the, the, the cyber security responsibilities that we have within it? So I see that a lot of these decisions get made by the executives that are not necessarily tasked with uh, implementing IT systems or even securing them. So we often have a one-sided conversation. We know where we want to take the business. But are we aware of how we do that technically and the risks that we need to control? Because if we have all of those people in the room, then we're having a holistic discussion. And right now, I don't think we're having that discussion. We still see IT and cyber as a reactive part of the process that we bring them in after we've identified this is where we want to take the business forward to. If you got into a point where you try to help some of these board members with their ads, the tight trail move their phone <laughs> just to try and make sure that they're secure in terms of security. Um, you know, I, I try. Like, I see a lot of board members now, they, they have these, uh, these AI type of apps like otter.ai and then it automatically joins any meeting and, I'm, and you know I have to try and say but like is this very secure like should we be allowing all of these things to come in um, but in terms of helping them out fortunately a lot a lot of these board members have an IT guy on standby so I don't necessarily have to do that however I try to make it my duty to highlight anything that is out there that is new. So things like CEO fraud from deepfakes. I try to make sure that my fellow board colleagues are aware or that these things exist, even if it may not be an imminent threat within that entity. Hmm. And how do you position these samples to them? I, so I generally don't do it within, within a formal board uh, setting. In a, for, you know, in a board meeting, I generally um, share that via like our WhatsApp groups or on, um, on email. So there may be like a new policy that has come into effect from uh, you know, a national perspective, and I'd probably take that and share it. Or there may be some research that's being done in terms of what board members need to look out for in terms of predictions in the future, where you would see things like misinformation and disinformation risk, I would then share that with them so that we, we are all sitting with the same mindset. When we sit in that boardroom, it's no longer Ms. Dyer's responsibility yep. to talk technology. Mm-hmm. It is the board's responsibility because we all understand this new threat. So we all pose those questions and try to figure out how does this impact our organization. The success of most of the things is measured by metrics. Do you have metrics that you use to measure now? To see, to say, these guys have understood that cyber security is a real danger for the business. That's a difficult one, right? I think we're struggling on both sides. Yeah. We're struggling on the operational side and we're struggling on the strategic side. Uh, from an operational, or like there's lots of metrics, but like which are the ones that matter? I think if you look at from a board perspective, they are interested in things like um, what happens if we have an incident? How long does it take us to detect it? How long does it take us to respond? What is the financial impact? Those are the sort of metrics. What is the loss that we've experienced? Or what is the loss that we'll have experienced? On the operational side, you know, we would look at things like vulnerabilities remediated, number of servers that are end of life, end of support. But that's not necessarily the metrics that would actually make a difference when we're talking about what do we need to focus on, what are the assets that we need to um, that we need to secure, and how are we securing it. In terms of whether both parties are understanding each other, because yeah. I think that's what you're going towards. Uh, I think that's a, that's a tough one. You need to have a strong board. So you have board members that understand business but can talk technical, technical language. You need to have an executive team that is also very strong in their IT and cyber. Together, you've got a, an executive function that can propose what needs to be done for the organization and a board that can say, let me help you with making the right decisions and providing the direction and the way forward. 
if either of those are lacking, then you're, you're not going to see success either way. The board is going to feel frustrated that uh, cyber is not taken seriously and the, the executives are going to feel frustrated that they can't move forward because the board is not taking them seriously. As it is right now, I think um, we are here kind of the end because of the concerns we have about cyber security. And uh, most of the times in companies, it is the executives that spearhead uh, the cyber the security strategies. How much of any influence do you think the boards right now have in the direction of cyber security within companies? I think they have quite a good level of influence. Um, but they need to be educated. So either the board needs to educate themselves or executives need to be able to educate the board. So, for example, a lot of board members will think that they are untouchable. Like they'll never be hacked, they'll never be fished. Yeah. Maybe run an exercise, show them how vulnerable they are. Um, show them what sort of personal information you can find out from them. Um, show them the difference between the, what information they have on their laptop and what somebody could do with that versus somebody. Like bring it to them, make it a bit personal, and that's the education that we can drive forward if the board itself does not have that. Speed. As we move with our conversation, what are some of the challenges that you face when you're trying to align cyber uh, priorities as well as the business objectives? You know, we always have this problem, even from an operational perspective. Like, uh, we want to secure the environment, but at the same time, we want to, we need to avoid operational disruption. Yeah. So the same thing happens all the way to the top, right? Um, but ultimately, we need to be able to hold the CEO accountable to say, you have a business to run. But at the same time, how are you balancing what you need to do from a business perspective with securing that? Yeah. Okay, and and uh, now moving to cyber security in the boardroom, which is your 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 topic of discussion today. Um, to what extent uh, of was involvement in the buy-in when it comes to cyber security? The I think it's 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 massive. It makes a huge difference. Difference if the, do you if the think board, they actually care about cyber security? They do. They do. They just don't. They just won't tell you that they care about it, right? Yeah. But if you think about it, the shareholders hold them accountable. Yeah. Right. To make sure that the business uh, is a going concern. Um, customers' data is in their hands. You're t- you're dealing with reputational risk. We we we. we we use different language. We talk about reputational risk, IP protection, um, financial risk. Those are the things we talk about. Yeah. But underneath all of that is cyber risk, mm-hmm. right? If you are hit by an attack, all of these uh, materialize. Mm-hmm. And so they are concerned about it, but they just don't know that they're concerned about it. So we need to help them understand why they need to be aware, uh, yeah. why they need to be worried. And the best way to do that is to just look at any board pack and check, is cybersecurity on your strategic risk register? Mm-hmm. Looking at the way cyber security is evolving in South Africa, in particular in other African countries, how easy is it for a CISO to get a, a, a seat on the board to try and advise? It's so, it's so, so hard. Board, yeah. So hard. It is, it is incredibly difficult. Yeah. You're coming from the bottom and you're trying to say, I want a seat there, but nobody's invited you, right? Um, so I think we, we need, as CISOs, we need to collaborate with the rest of the organization. The CRO has a seat at the table, yeah. right? The chief risk officer. The chief audit executive has a seat at the table. The CFO has a seat at the table. Yeah. Uh, so does the CEO. When we collaborate with all of them, and we want to hold all of these people accountable for cyber risks too, yeah. that's when you'll see the CISO will start getting closer. In your board packs, let's start working as an organization and say, how can we, even if we don't have our own cybersecurity report, how do we try to position it within the other report so it gets that limelight? Okay. Um, but there's two parts to play because the CISO can't do it on his own yeah. or her own. Yeah. It needs to be, it needs to come from the board to the board needs to say, we've got cybersecurity as a strategic risk. I am tired of hearing the CIO. I am tired of hearing the CFO of the fort on this. Yeah. Bring me the person that is responsible for this. And when we get to that stage, then we will see that 
uh, that, that real seat at the table. And it's coming, but it's, you know, it took a very long time for IT to get a seat at the table. Yeah. Yeah. N- just looking at uh, what you have said, uh, that is not easy. Um, and that means you need to engage the board differently. So what kind of a language should the CISO in use when try to engage the board to understand the threat of the face? That's it. That is easy. You speak to them in their language. The board understands revenue, so they understand profit, they understand loss. They understand business. Talk to them in business. Tell them why are you here? What, what are you trying to protect? Yeah. What could go wrong? What are those risks? That is something the board understands. Make it, make it relatable and make it understandable to them. But when you're doing that reporting, I think let's not be technical. Let's, yeah. let's leave the technical. We don't talk about a SIEM solution. We don't talk about our firewalls. Let's talk about what does this mean from a business perspective. When we say that something is at risk, what is it that is at risk? I often see cybersecurity strategies. I am in cyber. I see cybersecurity strategies as a board member, and I still don't understand, like, what does this mean? Like, tell me what this means. Yeah. As you conclude, um, what do boards, boards expect from... CISOs, when evaluating the cyber threats to the bills, what do they expect with her? Because since in there, when they can be a try to tell this story, what do they expect from me? I think they expect you to come in with an actionable strategy. Okay. So don't come in there and say, everything's bad. I need you to act now. And you need to implement all of this and it's going to cost this much money. Let's come in and say... Um, it's going to cost us, this is what I need you to focus on right now. But this is my strategy going forward. I need you to focus on these various things at this different point in time. And tell them this is what it means in the business language. These are your business processes. This is what we will be unable to deliver. So that it will help the board make the decision, particularly on where to allocate financing and, and how to help you along with that strategy. Uh, so I think that lastly, as we conclude our conversation, what kind of support does the board needs to give to CISOs uh, in building and implementing cyber security strategies? I think the board needs to give CISOs a little bit more attention. Right? Um, you know, you know, the board gives the CEO attention. Yeah. The CEO is responsible for everything, except IT, except cyber. Why? Because cyber is not a... Whose risk is cyber? It's still a business risk. The board needs to hold the CEO accountable for that, for that risk. At the same time, the board, in the audit committee, audit committee appoints a chief audit executive. That person is solely responsible for assurance. And they have dedicated time with that audit committee. Why do we not have that same dedicated time where uh, the CISO, a CISO is also responsible for risks and possibly one of the biggest risks within the organization. Thank you so much, Sandiga, for your time. We really appreciate it.